Bad Boys and Girls is Black History Month, although you should be learning about Black history and everyone in history all year long. I wanted to tell you about a pioneering artist named Mrs. Uh, Augusta Savage. All right, this is Augusta Savage. And not only was she an artist, she was a... Um, a female sculpt. She was a sculptress, and and men are mostly associated with sculpting. And here she was, a sculpting. And if you want to read more about her, I found this biography for children on Duckster's.com. Do you C K? Just like duck, S T E R S dot com, and you just look up biographies this is art history so she was born in 1892 but her most famous works are lift every voice and sing and gammon and uh, realization and john henry and they have a picture down here let me see yeah there's gammon it's supposed to be a little boy that's like a street urchin he's dressed lord of like the little newspaper boys back then it's got that little snazzy hat on. And that sculpture is in the uh, Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. And this one is called Lift Every Voice and Sing. It's made like a harp. And it's got people all lined up in there on a, look how they're in a hand right here. Oh, this is really cool. Let's see. It says about, it was commissioned by the New York's World, New York World's Fair, and it shows several black singers as strings of a harp, and they are held by the hand of God. Oh, that is so wonderful. And so here's the deal on, uh, there are no words today, no, uh, not words. Yeah, words are, you know, how we have vocabulary words, words to know. We don't have them today because uh, I had difficulty getting, my daughter usually sends me the PowerPoint slides, and they would not come off this brand new flash drive today. So there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say, or more than one way to do things. So we're going to go to the NIV version of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 18 through 31. Okay. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has come become for us wisdom from God that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore it is written, Let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. Okay, since we don't have those words today, let's look at some of these little footnotes here. Let me see. I'm just playing it by ear. First Corinthians 19. Oh, it says about 
Josiah, uh, Isaiah, the 29th chapter and the 14th verse, that one is referring to, and Corinthians, the first chapter and the 31st verse, Jeremiah, the ninth chapter and the 24th verse. So now we know that, let's see, Corinthians is in the New Testament, but they are referring back, which happens sometimes in the New Testament. They're referring back to the Old Testament. Let's see. Let's see if we can take a look at what Isaiah, the 29th chapter and the 14th verse says. All right. It says, therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Oh, so you can see it was kind of quoting that. Let's see. The next one was Jeremiah, the ninth chapter and the 24th verse. Okay, let's see. Back up. I'll spell it out. But let the one who boasts, boasts about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. Oh, that's pretty great right there. So our key verse is God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. That's from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, the 27th verse. And you remember, Corinthians has two parts. You have a part one. You have a first Corinthians, right? Then you have a second Corinthians. So this is obvious. Wait a minute. Somebody's saying it back there. Yes, it. this is an epistle of Paul to the church at Corinth. So obviously he wrote how many letters or epistles? Yes, he wrote two. First Corinthians and second Corinthians. Okay, let's see. Our lesson scripture comes today from first the first chapter of Corinthians, verses 18 through 31. Our lesson today is called to a special relationship. By teaching about the cross, we learn the power of God. The scriptures teach us this. God will cause a wise man not to understand. You understand? God can do that. And there are some wise people who do not understand. It's like how they'll ask. I've had people ask me who are, I don't know about wise, but they're really smart. And they know a lot of things from books, but they don't know the one book, the Bible. And they'll say, how can you... uh Worship something that you can't see. How do you, why can you believe this and that? And they're really smart, but they don't understand. God made the world's wisdom foolish. The world is not wide and wise enough to know God. God's message may sound foolish to Jews who want miracles and Greeks who want wisdom, but Christ is God's power and wisdom to everyone whom call whom God calls. God's foolishness, his foolishness is wiser, and even his weaknesses are strong, stronger than men, stronger than any person, any people on earth, right? Where were you when God called you? Few were wise by the world, world standards. Few had very much influence or important families. God chose foolish and weak things to shame the wise and the strong. Now, back then, too, in uh, Paul's day, in early, early biblical time, people thought that wealthy people, people with a lot of money, were smarter than poor people. And they were better than poor people. And there, he's saying that this is not true. God has been able to use the very poorest of the poor to 
confuse that idea. So he says, where were you? Few were wise by the world standards. That means the standards that worship money and worship a certain look and worship uh, fashionable clothes and that kind of thing. All the things that are, you know, really don't add too much improvement to your life. Few had very much influence or like didn't come from a important families. Even when he brought Christ to the earth, Christ didn't come back as the kind of king that had a crown and wondrous clothes and a beautiful palace here on earth, right? He came to in the body of a poor and the poor man's family, the poor woman, carpenter, and they did not have riches. In fact, in, um, in parts of the Bible, Christ talks about, about being homeless. And so you never know. I always talk that way about angels. You never know where you meet an angel. Angels don't come looking all beautiful in white robes and all that stuff all the time. Sometimes it could be someone who is disabled or homeless, someone with it that you would never suspect. God chose foolish and weak things to shame and wise the wise and the strong. God chose things hated by the world so he could destroy what the world thinks is important. No one can brag. We are part of Jesus Christ because of God. And, you know, sometimes I hate to hear people brag on themselves. You know, it's like I had a teacher in art. He said, when you have a talent in art, you don't have to brag about it because other people will see it. So that that's true about everything you do and say. You don't have to brag about how well you do in school because that will be shown, right? It will show up and other people will brag on you. You'll have a teacher to say, this student is so smart. I'm so proud of him. Your parents will say, oh, I'm so proud of my kid, right? But no one can brag. We are part of Christ Jesus because of God. So if you're going to brag on somebody, who are you going to brag on? Did you become part by yourself? Because of God, it says. Christ is our gift of wisdom from God and why we are right with God. Through him, we are F-R-E-E. -E. We are free from sin and we are holy. So people who must brag should only brag about the Lord. So the questions, who on earth can brag? The answer is no one can brag about themselves. If a person must brag, he or she should only brag about the Lord. Number two, how are we able to be a part of Jesus Christ? We are part of Jesus Christ because of God. A wise decision. The Contemporary Story for February 5th, 2023 Markel had a decision to make. He had to decide whether to try out for the basketball team or participate in a tutoring program. In his worst subject, math. What a decision, whether to join the team and enjoy playing his favorite sport. Or spend lots of time working on math. That they happened at the same time each day was terrible. That's just not fair. What's not fair? That basketball practice and math tutoring are at the same time. Why couldn't it just work out so that I could do both? Well, your dad and I aren't pushing you either way. It's your decision, and we know you'll make the best decision. Yeah, I know. You trust me to make a wise decision. And I don't think it's fair that I have to choose. Maybe you'll be able to talk to the math teacher and the basketball coach. And work something out. I don't know. But I'll try. What decision did Markel have to make? Basketball practice and math tutoring were at the same time on the same day. He had to decide the activity in which he would participate. What did his mom tell him? 
She told him to talk to the math teacher and the basketball coach and see if they could work something out. The end. You can be the voice of a cartoon character in a future contemporary story. Email Ms. Kathy to find out how at Ms. Kathy's class at mail.com. It's time for exploring the story in Ruby's Lab. Hello, Ruby here. Today's lesson is an important one for all of us to learn. How many times have you been in Markel's position? What would you choose to do? Would you take the opportunity to improve your math grades or would you go out for the basketball team? Why did Markel's mom tell him that it was his decision to make? It seems that Markel is in a difficult position. What would be, what would the wise decision be for Markel? What would your solution be? We all face these types of decisions. Think about how you can make wise decisions. You can tell me about some of your ideas by Send me a letter or a postcard to P.O. Box 74514, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70874. Or by my favorite means of communication, Ruby Red Panda at mail.com. I said that's Ruby Red Panda. You know it's Ruby Red Panda. Said Ruby Red Panda at mail.com. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Changed it up on you, didn't I? Not to the next page. But we have a word search here. And the word search you can do. Oh, I think I see one. I see a word right there. Greeks. All right. Well, we're not, I'm not going to show you any more of them. Because here's the word bank down here. Brag, cross, free, Greeks, Jews, message, weak, and wisdom. And if you circle your answers or take a highlighter and mark, mark, through, mark through them, you can take a picture of what you did. Let's see if you found all of the words. And you can send that to me, okay? Um, you can email your picture to Ms. Kathy's class at mail.com. Yeah, mail.com. And show me that you got all of these words. Okay, and here we're going to choose the right answer on the very next page. We can do this one together. I can't put marks on it, so let's see. I hope the page stays in one place because it looks like they like to roll up and down. Choose the right answer, and we have multiple choice. Number one says, God chose foolish and weak things to blank the wise and the strong. Okay, let's put defeat the wise and the strong. Number two, Christ is power and blank to everyone who is called by God. All right, if you circle the wisdom, you are correct. Number three, we are blank of Christ Jesus because of God. And that's A, part. We are part of Christ Jesus. Let's see, number four. Oh, I forgot. I'm supposed to be reading these answers that allow for our visually impaired friends, and they can do, they can choose the right answer as, as well. Where were you when God blanked you? A, talked, B, called, or C, left? That's right. The answer is B, called. And number five, God will cause a blank man to be unable to understand. A, wise, B, brave, or C, tall? A, a wise man will be unable to understand. All right, boys and girls, uh, I showed you that one. There's just one website that you can go to, duxters.com, and learn some more black history facts. 
there is also another good page called biography Biography biography.com it's from the same people who make the television show by the same name all right so mog and i are going to see you later oh and don't forget to send me some of your artwork send that artwork so i can post it on this on the next video or a video in the future okay you can email it to me at miss kathy's class at mail.com you can send um real drawings i mean not just a picture but i'm sorry i can't send it back to you i might be able to um but you can send it to p.o box 74514 baton rouge louisiana 70874 and uh let's see oh yes see that little subscribe button down there tell your parents subscribe for us okay it's for so that you'll get another notice when these come in and uh yes if you like our click the like the thumbs up for like and be sure to ask your parents to subscribe okay and uh yeah you can tell us what lessons you like and what things that other things that you would like to see in our videos by any of by the email address or by the post office box okay i see we have a lot of people from india who are watching so you know you might consider the email we love to hear from you guys all right so We'll see you next week because we love you, God loves you, and there is nothing you can do about it. Bye-bye.